So we know that diabetes is a disease that has been increasing over the last years a lot. Let's remember that in 1980, there were only 15 million diabetics in the world. Right now, we think that they might be more than 500,000 diabetics all over the world with a fact. And is that probably from 10 people that suffer diabetes, probably five to seven might not be correctly diagnosed. But let's remember that this is caused by all of the metabolic conditions of chronic inflammation and all the metabolic conditions that cause insulin resistance and that cause the body to start producing a lot of insulin as a response of the resistance. But some people might have diabetes, some people might have pre-diabetes, and having diabetes and having pre-diabetes is exactly the same thing. Both are a problem. It's just, you're just starting, you're midway, or you're just all, all over more advanced in the same progression. But the thing is with diabetes, that there are signs in which your skin can show you what's going on. Your skin might have changes, although there is a lot of people that don't know that they have diabetes and the skin might be a part in which you can start knowing on yourself or in someone else that you have a metabolic condition, that you have insulin resistance or that you have diabetes by itself. So number one is something called acanthosis nigricans. Acanthosis nigricans. This is a condition in which you see black or grayish brownish patches that they appear usually around the neck. They usually appear on your armpit or they might appear in the groins. This is something that is very, very usual. And you might go and see people maybe on the supermarket or elsewhere or on an airplane or wherever. You're going to see that it, it looks brownish they look dark they look they look opaque but they go all over the neck they are very very common something that is very useful too is to have infections and itching infections are very common because every single infection in diabetes is common when blood sugar is very high white blood cells don't have the same signaling to go and fight an infection they don't have the same effect they don't have the same strength but having skin infection or a bladder infection or a kidney infection or a wound infection or anything else is going to be very very probable number three we're going to have a slow wound healing same thing as with infections when you want a wound to heal you want your immune system you have you want all of the inflammation to be resolving that process that is installed over there for that you need a bunch of cells a bunch of different processes to be working properly high sugar in your blood doesn't let your immune system doesn't let the inflammation system to work properly so wound healing is going to be impaired and you see that and we've seen that we see that all the time with patients that have lesions in their foot or when you have to operate on them or when they're in the in the intensive care unit that the healing of the wounds it's very very slow and again let's go back to number two they get a lot of infections in those wounds as well number four they have dry skin skin starts to get with different conditions mostly because the vasculature that goes to the skin starts to be altered. When you have alterations in the vasculature, in the blood flow of the skin, skin starts to get thicker, it starts to get drier, and it starts to have like these flakes coming from the skin all the time. For instance, when you have a diabetic foot, and it's a, cr a chronic condition on diabetics, you see their socks, that they're full of a whitish powder. This white powder, it's their skin that it's so dry, so thick, and so altered that this is what you find. Diabetic dermopathy. Diabetic dermopathy causes alterations in the perception of pain. It causes alterations of the in the perception on pressure, but they also cause alterations in the perception and how you see them. And they look kind of purple, kind of, kind of brown, kind of reddish. They're, they usually appear along the lower part of the legs. So in, we usually see, the, see them on the inner part or on the outer part. Something that is very common, and it's number five, it's to find skin tags. Skin tags might appear anywhere in the skin of a person with diabetes. 
It's not completely understood the pathophysiology or the mechanism why skin tags are produced. Not for sure. We know that most of the people that get diabetes, a lot of the people that get diabetes start having this skin tags and they can appear with skin tags in any part and they could be all over the body. It could be in the face, in the neck, in the chest, in your back, in your groin, in your in your armpits, in your breath, in your arms, anywhere. But it doesn't mean that a person, that every person with skin tags have diabetes. And it doesn't mean also that everyone with diabetes is going to develop skin tags at all. But this is something that can be very, very related with diabetes. Number six is going to be the appearance of blisters or eruptions. Blisters, especially in the hands, they appear all the time. And they, it's a real headache with these blisters because they are extremely painful sometimes or sometimes they don't hurt at all. And the problem is when they're extremely painful, it means that there is already a nerve damage occurring in those nerves because of the amount of blood sugar that it's altering the perception of pain or they're altering the perception of pain into a, into a point where it where patients don't feel anything at all. So they get a blister, they don't notice that they get a blister, it gets infected, and they don't notice until the point where it, start, where it starts smelling different, where it starts smelling funny, and then they realize that they have an infection. But this is something, again, very common. It can appear in the hands, it can appear in their feet, it can appear in a lot of places, especially where there is chronic contact after sitting or after or laying down or after anything, they can appear and they appear all the time. And also diabetes can cause skin discoloration. It could be hyperpigmentation, which means that the skin turns into a more darker color in areas, in patches. It doesn't have anything to do with what we mentioned before, or it could appear with hypopigmentation, which is completely the contrary, which is a lower pigmentation or a lighter color, again, in some areas. And this is something that might appear. Again, not everyone with a hypopigmentation means that they have diabetes. Let's remember that people with vitiligo, they don't have pigmentation in their skin and they get areas with that pigmentation, but that doesn't mean and it doesn't relate that they have diabetes at all. They can have the disease without having diabetes. And the lesions look very, very different. So again, you can have hyperpigmentation or hypo, which is lower or discoloration on the skin. So like guys, let's remember that we have a huge responsibility with diabetes. This is something that it's getting, that got out of control long ago. It's not getting out of control, it got out of control long ago. And this is something that we are responsible for because type two diabetes, which is 95 or 97% of the diabetes that we see right now in the world, that we see in every single age, in every single country, that we see everywhere. This is something that we are responsible for because it, it is completely caused by lifestyle. It is caused by us. There is nothing that we're doing really to do something about preventing with scientific habits to really prevent diabetes. Diabetes can be reversed. We can treat diabetes and there's a lot of things that we can do to treat it, but we should focus on preventing. We should focus on really giving treatment to make a reverse on diabetes and then just to be controlling blood sugar. Because if we just do that, we're just touching the tip, the final tip or the upper part so let's remember that we have a big responsibility and by you knowing the symptoms, you can be aware with you or with someone in your family or with a relative that something might be going on. And the whole purpose of this is that you get the knowledge so we can all start changing the system. Let's remember that we are the system. System, it's not what, we, what you see in your country or in your city or in your state. The system is when we as a community in our houses, we remember that the best way to create health is by changing our minds, is by creating a system in which we take care of each other. And when we have tools and we, and when we know how to use them. And this is the whole purpose of this channel. So please remember before you leave to share this video and also to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and to hit the bell. So every time that we make a new video, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you so much. Until next time.